Hello, welcome to Tuesday's tip from the workshop, fitting the neck again. Um, an, another tip for fitting the neck. Uh, this has worked great. Um, I'm not going to go into how it evolved to what I'm doing right now, but I'll just tell you what I'm doing now. Uh, I like to use the mortise and, mortise and tenon style neck joint. Um, it gives you a nice gluing surface. It's easy to reset the neck. It's easy to change the pitch without compromising the fit of the neck. Uh, dovetail is a great uh, neck joint. I've done I don't know, maybe 75 guitars using a dovetail neck joint is self-locking. So if you're using a dovetail style neck joint, this little trick I'm going to show you doesn't apply. If you're doing a dovetail style neck joint, the idea is to get the dovetail to fit and then don't mess with that neck joint. Get your pitch and the yaw leaving the neck joint alone. It's a whole nother process. I'm not going to go into that, but just keep that in mind. It's a different way to do it. The mortise and tenon uh, one of the problems is it works great, but it's not self-locking, so it just comes right out. So it's hard to make sure to double check that you have uh, uh, everything's lined up and, and that. And also in gluing it in place, it's a little tricky because it wants to slide out. So what I noticed in the Martin was doing was they were putting a little threaded insert and there you put a little screw in from the block and it helps hold it in place and it actually serves as a have some people use two screws. I think Martin just had one screw. Um, I just use one screw. So, but let me show you how I do it. It's a little different. I use just a good old drywall screw. You can call it a Luthery screw if it makes you feel better. Stick it in there. Pre-drill the hole. You know, mark and everything. Get it all lined up. Get it. Pre drill. You have a hole going through your neck block and you mark it where you're going to drill the hole and drill the hole in the, in the uh, neck itself. You don't want the screw to go any deeper than the depth of your uh, uh, um, joint. Don't have it go into the uh, neck itself. And I get a long screwdriver. I came up with this uh, when I was doing the mandolins. I wanted to use the same neck joint because I believe in it. I like having a lot of wood to wood contact. But of course, there's no sound hole to get into. So I started using a long screwdriver. It works great for uh, acoustic guitars too. Uh, just in through where the end pin is going to be. You can, I can see it from here. Oh, it just slipped. There we go. Look how easy it is. Let's tighten that sucker down. Then what I'll do, this is not, this is just for checking the fit. You use your little faux bridge, stick it on there, do the rulers and all that to make sure everything's where it needs to be. But it's great. And then also when it's time to glue the neck to the body, I'll do the same thing. I'll use that as an internal clamp. So I have the screw cutting into the neck joint um, to pull it into the body. But that's not all it takes. Here's one I just uh, glued up. Do. You do the uh, drywall screw in to pull it into the body, then put your other clamps on for gluing the end of the fingerboard. I like these long clamps, they come in handy for a lot of stuff to pull the heel in. So you have the middle of the neck being pulled in, the heel being pulled in, the fingerboard being clamped down. It's great. Then after it's all nice and dry, I take the drywall screw out. I make a little cover plate, and on the cover plate, I say what kind of glue I use, and what the dimensions of are the of, are of the joint, and what kind of joint it is. So I'm writing a message to future repair people, so they won't be. There's so many different kinds of neck joints these days. I just feel like it's a, a service for my guitars, so that someone if they ever has to be worked on in the future, they'll have something to go by. It's not just blind. So um, I have one more thing to tell you. <laughs> That is get this off now. It's the coolest thing, isn't it? I mean, this is the for years. For years, I worked my hand in through the sound hole. With this long, it's just so much easier like this. Plus, you get a lot more torque on that um, uh, on the screw. Now the uh, <laughs> you drill, you're screwing into end grain. 
Uh, I find that 60-70% of the time just a, the drywall screw will do just fine and cut right into that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll drill a little teeny pilot hole, I'll take a drywall screw and screw it in and screw it out, uh, almost like tapping the wood. The screw doesn't go any deeper than the joint. It does not cut into the heel. Uh, if it ever gets boogered up and doesn't uh, bite, drill it out. I cut a little, uh, not in grain, but a, you know, the flat section. I cut a plug out of a piece of maple, glue, uh, drill it, plug it in there, and then the screw is biting into that uh, plug. If that doesn't work, <laughs> that works 99% of the time. But if that gets chewed up, then you could get a little teeny threaded insert and send the screw in. Uh, all the, the screw comes out after the thing's dry. It's just I only use it for clamping. You could leave the screw in if you'd like. I just like having the screw out of there. You don't need it. Uh, it the, the strength of the joint is the size of the joint and the, and the, you know, the, the uh, integrity of the fit. So anyway, this has worked great for me. I hope it works for you. <laughs> Be happy building guitars.